Hi everyone and welcome along to today's webinar. My name is Roshni and I am part of the customer team here at Sweet Files. And today we're going to be giving you a bit of an overview of Sweet Files Connect, how to use it and how to implement it in your business. So expecting today's session to take uh, just under an hour. So what exactly is Sweet Files Connect? Well, it's our answer to the client portal, one of our most requested features. So we're, we're really happy to have that live and uh, keen to get you all to start using it and get an idea of how that can work in your business. So the idea with Sweet Files Connect is that it's going to allow you to turn an existing folder in your Sweet Files site into a connected folder. Then your customers will be able to log in to Sweet Files Connect, which is a platform that we've built especially for them. They can create folders and files within Connect. They can upload files for you. They can even edit files. So these changes will then be reflected back into Sweet Files for you. So you'll also be able to request files from your customers and have those files come back into Sweet Files into your chosen folder. So I'm excited to be taking you through all of that today, as well as Sweet Files document signing for those that haven't seen it yet. So what we're going to cover today is the process of creating connected folders in Sweet Files. So that's turning that existing folder into a connected folder and sharing that with your client. We're going to take a look at file requests and also how you can send a document out for your customer's review, edit and approval. Then we'll log in to the Sweet Files Connect platform just so that you can get an idea of what that's going to entail for your customer. And as you start to share connected folders with your clients, uh, you'll want to see how you can manage those back at the Sweet Files end. So I'll take you through where and how you can do that. And we'll definitely have some time to cover off document signing as well. So the reason why we cover that in today's session as well is because the uh, one of the great things about Connect is that if you are using document signing and your customers are using Connect, then they'll also be able to access final copies of their, their signed documents from within Connect and they can also see tasks um, assigned to them for the actual signing request when you send it out to them. There'll be time for Q&A, so if you do have any questions as we go through today's session, then please add your questions to the Q&A section, which you can hopefully see in the Zoom webinar tool. I'll keep an eye on those as they come in and um, we'll answer them all in the Q&A section. And then if you're not already underway with Connect and you're wanting to get started, I'll just talk you through how you can set that up for your Sweet Files and your team to, to, to start uh, using it. Okay, so we're going to switch across into Sweet Files now and take a look at that process. So what I'll do is I'll just switch, switch my screens over here. So hopefully this is looking nice and familiar to you all. Uh, we, we're inside one of uh, our client folders within Sweet Files. So you can see here that I have my internal folder structure. So the, um, where I'm storing my client's files, uh, none of these are shared um, with my client at the moment. So if we can just take this as say a new customer that's come on board um, and we're wanting to share some uh, some documents with them or we're wanting to create a connected folder for them to add documents into for us. What I would need to do first of all is create a folder in Sweet Files for that purpose. So if we click on the three dots here and just create a new subfolder, this is the one that I'm going to keep aside for all of that uh, client-facing material. 
So you can give it a name. So what you would, uh, what you can do here is just have a nice, really easy, uh, simple internal naming mechanism. So that could, it's absolutely fine for that to be the same across the board. Um, it's all, you're always going to be able to keep track of what you've created and where in the management area, which I'll show you a little bit later on. So what you can do is come up with a naming convention that works for you. Um, for example, I'm just going to simply call this a connected folder. And you can of course select a folder template if you, uh, if you have a certain folder structure that you would like your connected folders uh, to follow, then you're most, uh, most able to, to set those up. For steps on creating folder templates, I recommend heading over to our help center, which is help.sweetfiles.com. If you're not familiar with that process, we also run weekly webinars. So this one is covered in our basics training, which is held every Monday. So um, I'll, I'll send you guys the links. Uh, all the links will be available at the end of the session if you're interested in coming along to that. But I'm just going to keep my folder structure nice and simple and just create that subfolder there. So now this is simply a folder that's been created in my Sweet File site. In order for me to share that with my customer uh, or my client, I would need to now turn it into a connected folder. So you may want to add files to the folder first. So if you're wanting to share a bunch of files uh, with your client when they first access the connected folder at their end, then you can definitely go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is just add a couple of uh, samples in here for us. So that can just be a case of either creating a file from within Sweet Files, or if you have the files elsewhere, you can uh, drag and drop those into the folder. So anything that you do add to this connected folder is going to be shared with your client. So it's really important to note. And had I created a subfolder structure and filed documents within those subfolders, then those two would be shared with my client once it's turned into a connected folder. So the steps to turn it into a connected folder is just to click those three dots again. And here you'll see the share as connected folder option. So one thing to note is that um, be, in order to utilize Sweet Files Connect, you'd need to be on our third tier plan, which is called Super Suite. So if I'll talk through um, steps to do that, if you cannot see the share as connected folder option from your folder drop down here, then it means that you're on a uh, either a tier one or two plan. So if you have any queries about that at all, then please feel free to pop through a, a question there. Um, but what what you can do and what I'll show, I'll show you the steps to enable that a little later on in today's session. So to share as a connected folder, you simply click on that button there. And here we've switched things up a little bit. So this has changed for any of you that may have attended the webinar back in September when we first launched. So what we've done here is we are giving you the ability to bring through your or into your contact details. So this is going to be the person that you want to share the folder with. So if you are uh, integrate, if you're integrated with the with Zero Practice Manager, or you have your contacts stored in one of our integrated uh, systems, then what you would be able to do is simply start typing your client's name. And you can see here, so my particular client is called Mitzi, and I want to send her, um, send those to her, and I've got her details stored in Zero Practice Manager, which is also known as um, very similar to Workflow Max, which is why that's coming through with the Workflow Max label. So that's a bit of a change that we have implemented uh, since we've launched Sweet Files Connect. So if you click on that option there, you do also have the ability to create a new contact. So that might be for those that don't have your contacts, um, you don't use Zero Practice Manager, or you um, and you need to just create a new contact from scratch, then you would be able to do that from within here as well. So I'll just go into pick Mitzi and select her there. And then there's a few details that you'll need to complete on the right hand side. 
So you'll recall we just simply called this a connected folder, that's for our internal purposes, but at their end you might want to give them a little bit more context. So uh, in my case, my company name, this is my demo, demo suite company, so I am uh, Abacus Accounting, so I'm just going to call this Abacus and MMW Co connected folder. Completely up to you what you use here. I will show you at um, my client's end what that will look like for her and it will allow you to determine an internal, uh, an internal naming convention as well as what you want your public or your display name naming convention to be. But this is just an example of what you can, uh, what you can do. And then you can also enter in your message. So this is um, going to be the very first time that my client has interacted with me via Suite Files Connect. So you might just want to uh, give them a little bit of a rundown on how you're planning to use Suite Files Connect and what they can expect out of it. So we have, um, we also will send an invitation email the very first time you um, you basically inviting them to Sweet Files Connect. So they'll receive an email at their end um, with steps to get started. So I'm just going to pop a quick note in here. You can also set an expiry date for the connected folder. So if you're wanting to just keep this open for the next uh, month, then you would be able to select uh, an, an expiry date for the folder from within here. Um, or you can just simply leave that blank and that will leave the your client's um, your client will have access to the connected folder indefinitely. You can always jump into the management area and amend the expiry date um, to basically lock off access um, or change it to extend the expiry. So there's a bit of flexibility there. I'm just going to leave this blank and that will just keep that uh, folder open for Mitzi uh, until I go in and change it. So the other thing to note that we put it in uh, red here is that it's really important to understand that this folder and its contents are going to be now shared externally. So your clients are going to be able to view um, those files, they're going to be able to download them, preview them, uh, and if they have Office 365 themselves, and then they'll be able to log in with their own Office 365 credentials, and they would be able to make edits to, say, a Word document that you have um, uploaded there. So just keep that in mind. Um, that will help determine what exactly you share and you might might not share within this connected folder. And um, once you're happy with that, then you can click on the send button and that is going to send an invitation email to in this case Mitzi and that's going to allow her to uh, to log in to connect for that first time. Okay so what we'll take a look at next is We'll jump over into a different folder because what you can also use Sweet Files Connect for is a, a, a file request. So this can be used in situations where you need your client to submit a particular document and you don't necessarily need to have that document come back into the, the Sweet Files Connected folder that you may have shared with your client. Um, you may not even set up connected folders, you might use Connect for these file requests only. So what we've done is we've added the ability under the Create button here to create a file request. So if you hover over that, it just tells you that you can request files from clients and contacts. So what this means is that you can choose any folder within Sweet Files. So let's say I want um, my client to upload a, um, a particular file for me. So let me just click on the Create button here. I'm going to create the file request. Again, you just enter in your contact details. And this time I'm requesting a file from my client. So 
I'll just type in bank statement from September. You can customize this message. And again, you can set an expiration date. In this case, it really relates to the date that the that you want this completed by. So it's like a due date. So you can set that up uh, here and click send. So if this is the very first interaction that you are having with your clients in Connect, then they will receive an invitation. Otherwise, if they're already set up on Sweet Files Connect, that maybe you've shared a folder with them already and this time you are requesting a one-off file from them, they will simply receive an email notification uh, and an app notifications within Connect itself. Okay, so that file request has now been sent. What we're going to do is jump into our client's inbox and we're going to take a look at what they, what they see at their end. Okay. So here we have my client's inbox. Um, not that you would normally have access to this, but this is the best way for me to demonstrate to you what happens at their end. So you can see we've got a couple of emails that have come through. Um, they're coming through from the um, from a Sweet Files email address. So it's coming through from no reply at the full suite uh, And you can see here that it has the link to join you via Connect. So they would be able to click that and that would take them through to the login. Um, now with this particular customer, she does actually have a, a Sweet Files Connect account already. But if we were to click on that for the very first time, if we click on that email link, then your client is going to be pointed to the setting up your account screen. So they'll be going to the URL connect.sweetfiles.com. And we have a couple of different ways that your clients can log in to Sweet Files Connect. So for those of you that might have caught, um, caught wind of it at ZeroCon, they are working on a single sign-on and we're one of the first, uh, first partner apps to have access to this. So we are really excited to be able to enable your customers who are using Xero already to set up an account with Sweet Files Connect using their existing Xero credentials. So they can just click on this button here and that's going to take them through the login process through Xero and redirect them into Sweet Files Connect. And in my customer's case, she has a Gmail account and that's the one that I have invited her to connect with so that um, for her, an option there is to set up her account with Google. And if none of those options apply to your customer, then they are most welcome to enter in their email address and we'll just grab a few details off of them uh, and then they'll be able to create a password and, um, and access Connect that way. So three options there to get up and running and in my customer's case she has an existing account so for her it's a case of clicking log in here and as I said she's um, got that I've invited her with the Gmail account and so she's going to log in with Google and so we're gonna it's gonna automatically log her in and here we are in Sweet Files Connect so this is split into a few different areas. So the main ones are going to be your their tasks and folders. So we're actually going to be making a change to this. So it's important to, um, to note that in um, a little while, we're going to be just flipping those over. So we're going to actually prioritize the folders. The folder list is going to be uh, at the top of the list followed by tasks. So um, what they'll first see when they log in is any folders that have been shared with them. So for starters, it's just going to be typically the folder that you yourself have shared with them, but you might want to structure it so that you're sharing multiple folders with your clients. Um, other types of companies might be, um, might be creating connected folders as well. So they may end up with multiple um, multiple. Sweet Files Connect folders. Right now, Mitzi just has this one that has just been shared with her. And if she clicks on that folder there, 
then that is going to take her in to the list of files that are contained within that folder. So right now we only have this one document here. This is a PDF file, so it really just depends on what type of file has been shared um, as to what she can actually do with the file. So in a case of a PDF file, um, she can select it and that is going to load a preview of it. Then under other actions, she'd be able to download a copy. So we don't have editing capabilities for PDFs um, within the web apps. And so we don't have that uh, available through Connect at the moment. Um, but if there was a Word document, then they would be able to um, they'd see different actions. So they would be able to open or edit in, um, in Office 365. Now you can also see that they have the ability at the top right corner here to create documents and subfolders. So within the create dropdown, they can click folder that is going to allow them to have full control over the structure. So we can click create and they can also create documents as well. So for, <clears throat> excuse me, for example, Word documents, Excel, PowerPoint, and plain text files. So because Sweet Files, uh, as hopefully you all know, it's built on top of Office 365, and so therefore we can sort of tap into um, the, the creation process for those Office file types. So that's why you're seeing those file types in that create list. Your client can also upload documents into Sweet Files Connect. So by clicking the upload button, they will have the ability to either add files, so that's just going to take them through their file explorer, or they can drag and drop files as well. So if we, <coughs> excuse me, if we drag and drop, say, this document here, into that box, then you can see that that has now been uploaded. If I click on done there as the customer, that's now been uploaded into the uh, Abacus and MMW co-connected folder. Okay, so what that means for you is back in Sweet Files. If we, <clears throat> excuse me, just one second. Okay, so if you um, were to navigate back to your connected folder in Sweet Files, you can see that you now see the bank statements folder that your client has, connect, uh, has created, as well as those files that have been uploaded. Now, if you were to also create a document from within here, they would be able to see um, the updates as they happen. So it's very much a live, um, a live or well, that one source of truth. And it will mean that you can collaborate on documents if you want to, as well as um, just keep track of, um, of different changes and edits to certain files. Now, what we'll do as well is take a look at the tasks area. So let's just jump back into the connected side. And under tasks, you can see here that the client has received a notification about the bank statement from September 2019. So this, we've redesigned um, tasks or we're sort of trying to align it with more of an inbox feel. So you can see here that we've got the uh, file request and the more file requests and, and say signature requests that you send through, um, they're going to start to see a long list of those appear under their tasks. And then as they select a task, it's going to open up in this main view here. And you can see that it is going to run more like a chat back and forth. So they also have the option to view and upload files. Um, once it's done, they can mark that as done and they can message you back as well. You'll receive a, a notification in your tasks and suite files as well. 
So for them, in this case, we're wanting them to action this one for us so they can click the view and upload files button. And again, they've got that uh, file upload screen. In my case, I'm just going to, as Mitzi, drag and drop my bank statement up here and click done and then message back. and click press enter or hit send and that is going to upload that um, what's already uploaded the the document but it's also up added that message there as well they can add upload multiple files um, so even though you have just asked them for a bank statement in September they would be able to uh, add additional files here as well so maybe they know that they need to pass on the October one to you um, so that you, they can add multiple um, so that can um, be used to upload documents to you. Okay, so in terms of the folders as well, let's just skip back a step. Um, let's just take a look at the editing of Word documents. So what I'll what I'll do is I'll add a Word document to, um, sorry, I'll upload and drag and drop. So this can be either a, a document that I've got on their computer that they can upload, uh, or they can of course create that from scratch, right from within Connect. Now with this, we can click on the document and that's going to load a preview of the file. So it's a pretty simple one to start with. And you can see here that we have the open and office online option available. Other actions simply include the download a copy option. So under the open an office online that's going to open up a new tab with the document. Now they will be prompted to log in so they would need a um, an office 365 subscription in order to be able to do this. So what I'm going to do is sign in with my existing credentials just so that it gives you an idea of what that will look like. Okay so this is me opening the document from within Sweet Files Connect so this is sort of the um, what your client's going to see so let's just put So you can see that's saving uh, automatically and that's going to be saving back to this document, which is also in your Sweet Files site. So I can, once I'm done editing, I can just close that tab. Um, if I was to refresh this file, it will show those most latest and greatest edits to the Connect user. And then back in Sweet Files, if we jump in to our site and back in, we can refresh that folder then that's going to show those most recent uploads as well as the Word document. So for me, I could click on that file and you'll be able to see that those edits are in that document. So um, someone has just popped through a question just asking from a, if you are, if someone's in the process of editing a file, will you be able to see that it's being that it's been locked or checked out? And um, we don't have a locked or checked out feature or function within Sweet Files because we're built on top of Office 365. When you're opening documents up from the web app, so this is this is what we refer to as the web app. So this is the one that you're using in your browser. Then, if your client is opening it up and editing it as well, then you will be able to see them in the document at the same time. So that collaboration functionality is well and truly, um, you know, possible within 
suite files connect and in yourselves opening up a document uh, at your end. So we don't lock it or, or check it out. That's not a function that we offer, um, but you can definitely see that somebody is in that document provided you're opening it up from within this web app here. Okay, so uh, if you do have any questions as you, as you think of them, then do definitely uh, add them to the Q&A section and I'll, I'll answer the remaining questions more towards the end of the session. Okay, so the other thing that you can do with Connect, and this can either be within your uh, connected folder, or it can be, again, those one-off one -off files. So you'll recall that we requested Mitzi's uh, bank statements, and that was from the 2019 folder. You can see that she uploaded those, and they're now sitting in your uh, in your 2019 folder. So for wherever you originate that file upload request uh, is going to it's going to be where those files end up. Okay. So just give me a moment there. I'm just going to reset a few things. Perfect. So the other thing that you can do is if you have a particular file, so let me just go into, um, let me just jump into say the engagement folder and I'm going to create, um, let me just add a drop, drag and, drag and drop another document. So I think I've used all of these by now, but let's just pop this receipt up here. Okay, so you've, you've also got the ability for a one-off file to send it to Connect for your client's uh, review, for them to edit, or for them to approve. So this is, um, this is found by clicking on the three dots right next to the file name, and you'll see the option to send to Connect. Again, what you can do is enter in, look up your contact details. And in this case, this file is a, a JPEG. So it's a, just an image file. It's a scanned copy of a receipt that I, um, I bought some cake a while ago. So this one I am just sending through to them and I can just pop that as a re option to review. Uh, <clears throat> enter in a message subject. Again, you can set a due date and send that on its way. So what this is going to do is it's going to sit in, uh, your client's going, going to get a, an email notification, of course, but if they're already in Connect, then they're going to also see uh, their tasks um, jump up in number here. So you can see how we have the bank statement there, as well as now um, this cake, this message about this random cake receipt. So what they can do is they can um, download a copy of that particular document, in this case just the JPEG file. So they can't open it to edit it. Uh, let's just open it up in photos. So here's the, the rogue receipt. Um, they can say, no, it wasn't me. And that interaction is captured um, both at your end and theirs. So you can also send things through for approval. And I'll also take you through the process of the document signing as well. And we can see what that looks like at the client's end too. Before we jump into the document signing part of the session, what I wanted to show you is how you can manage all of your connected folders. So in this case, <clears throat> I've only just shared this uh, across to Mitzi, but there might be other uh, colleagues um, or team members who have created connected folders as well. So to get an idea of what is, has been shared with with the world basically from your suite file site, you would want to just keep track of all of that under the more drop down, And then you'll see the connected folders option there. 
So this is split into a few different areas. And so the first one is your list of all of the connected folders for your site. So it will include the, the name of the connected folder, as well as its folder path within suite files. You can see who created it. Uh, if it expires, you'll see an expiry date there. And you also have a number of folder options, um, connected folder options by clicking on those three dots. So whether or not you want to view the connected folder, that will take you through to this, this folder path here. In, in your suite files, you can click on the folder settings. So let's just jump into this new one that I just created. So you can see that you can click on that and that will take you into the connected folder so you can keep an eye on what's going on in there. Uh, but if I click on the three dots for the one that I just created, I can click on the folder settings here and this will allow you to do a, num a few things here. So Right now, you'll recall that I didn't set an expiry date for the folder. Let's say I've changed my mind on this and I want to uh, just keep this one open until the end of the year. That is going to update the due date or the expiry date for that connected folder now um, at, on the 31st of December. We can see here that we have the users who have been invited to the connected folder. Now, right now, the way that it works is that when you initially set up a connected folder, you can only add one contact. We definitely have plans to, to make that so that you can share it with multiple people in a business at once. But if you, for right now, while you can only invite one person at a time at the initial stage, you can come into the settings here, click on the users option, and then you will be able to uh, add another contact. Under recent activity, you will be able to see what has happened to the document. So for example, you can see that the um, Word document had been modified, um, created and then modified. Uh, that has been, uh, she uploaded the job report and the creation of the bank statements folder. So you can keep an, um, up to date on the recent activity for a particular portal or connected folder. Under recent activity here on the left, you can also see across your entire uh, connected folder system, you'll be able to see exactly what's been going on and um, by home and when. Okay, so you can also under the three dots here, you can rename the connected folder and you can also delete the connected folder. So what that would do is it would remove the connected folder so your client will no longer have access to it. The folder and its uh, contents will still remain on your suite files site, but any of that audit log history will be deleted as well. So that, um, that one's really important to be aware of. The other thing to note about the connected folders list is that only the, it's, it's security trimmed. So what that means is that if you've got permissions, um, folder permissions throughout your suite files site so that you've locked out um, certain users from seeing certain folders and suite files, it will mean that they can only see the connected folders uh, of the of the areas within suite files that they actually have access to. So for example, um, if we have, most of these are client folder examples and I have access to my entire clients folder, but let's say that there was a business folder um, and maybe we've shared some documents with our lawyer, for example, those I might not be able to see. It doesn't mean uh, that it doesn't exist. It just means that I myself don't have permission to, to view or manage that connected folder. So it's very much handled or managed by permissions. Under recent activity, you can keep an eye on everything that's going on. Um, so Mitzi is pretty active right now, of course, but you can see that also um, we've had some other connected um, clients access the uh, connected folders that we've shared with them as well. From the three dots, you can view the folder that that document is within and of course jump into that file um, by uh, just clicking on that link there. 
and of course within your um, within your office documents so for example if you're opening up a word document you do have access to the version history of that file if you're opening them up in the desktop apps so you certainly get to make use of those standard uh, Microsoft Office features because of the fact that we um, we're sort of working tying in with those document types finally the connected users list just shows you who has been shared connected folders so it's by user and how many folders they have been shared so you can see that um, we've got molly at sweet files with eight at the moment um, but most of the time you'll have only a handful um, per customer so that's going to start to get uh, longer and longer as as the weeks and months progress so let me know if you have any questions on that. What I'm going to do is just jump in to the document signing side of things, just to give you an overview of that for those of you that haven't seen it. Uh, to do that, I'm going to jump back into my client's folder. And I'm going to uh, create that here. Now, what I'm gonna do actually is create a file from a template. This is just going to mean that I can feed a lot of information through. I don't have a lot of information um, set up in um, Zero Practice Manager for this particular client. So I'm gonna use another client's details, but just bear with me. Now, for those of you that don't know about file templates, these allow you to basically create a document. So something that you're sending out to your clients regularly. And if you're integrating with a product such as Zero Practice Manager, where you have all of your clients contacts uh, stored then you can feed all of that information through into your suite files template so I've got a few examples here I'm going to just use this one and I'm going to choose 99 corporation uh, the other thing that you can do for your templates is enter field values and this is just going to allow me to personalize it so I know I'm using the wrong info but I'm going to change this from the account manager from Andrew to myself so this for my for this particular letter it is going to be signed off by me rather than Andrew and then under here rather than but I'm just going to overtake that with Mitzi um, if you do have these checkbox values that are feeding in through from Zero Practice Manager, then you can also toggle them and change them as required. But I guess the idea really is to have the, all that information stored at the Zero Practice Manager end, um, or if you're using Workflow Max or Zero Tax. So we do integrate with a number of systems that allow you to utilize this functionality. Any questions on that, just ask. We do have a uh, training sessions that we hold every Tuesday that cover this in way more detail than I have time for today. Um, so definitely come along to that if you're keen to learn a little bit more about file templates. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just create that and that's going to take all of that information from the, in my case, XPM, and it's going to bring through or create that Word document for me um, and have all of this information that I can edit. I can continue editing it if I want to. I'm just going to give it a bit, bit of skim read. And the other thing to note is if you're going to be using um, Suite Files document signing and, and file templates, then what you would need to do with your file templates is just adjust them so that they have the, um, the spots on the document that you want to place the signature fields onto. So just have a look at this information here. I need my client to sign. I need her to put her name and the date signed. So those are all going to be fields that I place on the document using Suite Files document signing. But you just need to make sure that you've got enough room on the document for those. So this is about the amount of space that you would need, um, a, couple of, a couple of lines worth um, of white space, and then you can place those fields. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to step back a step, and I'm going to jump in and just rename this because I don't want it to say 99 Corporation. I want it to say this, and I'm going to save that. And once you are happy with the file, then if you're starting with a Word document, so that would be a .docx file like you can see here, then we have the option to convert that into a PDF just by clicking on the request signature button. Now, if you are starting with a PDF file, so that might've been something that you have um, 
created from another system and downloaded and uploaded it back into Suite Files, or you might have used Suite Prints to get it into Suite Files. So if you are starting with a PDF file, then you will also be able to mark that up for document signing. So Word documents are a really good starting point, especially if you are using file templates. You just simply click the Request Signature button, and that is going to turn it into a PDF file for you that is now ready to be marked up. So we don't mark up the Word document itself, we convert it to PDF and then we place those signature fields. Okay, so in terms of if you're starting off with a PDF, so you can see this is now a PDF file, this is what you're going to see now. So it's going to be a document signing drop down here and you have a few options to choose from. So you have the sign and save option, which will give you the ability to just sign a document and save it back to Suite Files. So it's just when you yourself need to sign something, um, you don't need it to be sent out to a client for their signature. If you are wanting to fetch your client details from, say, Zero Practice Manager, if you have their email address and their mobile phone number, set, say, stored in the, that system, then you'll be able to utilize the quick sign option. And then I'll just take a peek into the advanced sign option there. This is for scenarios where you don't have their their data stored in Zero Practice Manager or XPM or Zero Tax. This is for scenarios where you need to enter in the details from scratch. So you can click on advanced sign and that enter in their full name, email address, um, and optionally their mobile phone number. Now the mobile phone number is used for SMS verification. This will send a verification code to your client before they submit that document for signing. So it's just a two-step um, two-step uh, authorization process just to verify your client's identity. You can add multiple signers and this option is also helpful if you have a scenario where you need to add a CC recipient which is someone who doesn't uh, need to sign the file themselves but they want a copy or need to see a copy of the signed file once everyone has completed it. So that's advanced sign. Um, what I'm going to do is opt for the quick sign option here because I've got Mitzi's contact details stored in XPM. So again, you're looking up the contact, selecting them from the drop down there. This blue tick will come up if you have their email address and mobile phone number stored in Zero, at the Zero Practice Manager end in my case. So that just means, uh, just gives you a little bit of a heads up to let you know that, yep, you've got, we've got your details for the client and um, we can, um, we'll be able to email this off to them. You can add multiple people to a document for signing. So if I wanted another person to sign the document, I could add them to that list. But in my case, I only have one that needs to be signed. So I'm just going to select, uh, click the select recipients option. And what you'll see on the left hand side now is that you have this document signing panel. So the idea here is to just scroll down to the parts of the document that you need signed. Um, in my case, I want to sign the document myself first. So I can, my, myself, I am selected by default from this dropdown. You can see if you click on that, that your client will also uh, be listed there. But first steps is to pop your own signature on there if you need to. Just skip that step if you don't need to. I'm going to click on the My Signature option. That turns the mouse into a cross here and so you can pop it where you want it. Um, I've customized my signature. I could have done a better job I'm sure but that is a custom signature that I have created. I'll show you where you can do that shortly. In terms of your client, you can select them from the drop down there. Uh, in their case, you want their signature. So just click the field that you need and then place it on the document. I need their full name, place it on the document and then the date signed as well. So you can also pick those fields up and just align them on the document until you're happy with their placement. And you can also select those fields one by one until they have the, um, the orange outline on them, or you can just 
drag and select them all like so and you'll see this little alignment tool appear at the top of your screen so in my case I have all of my um, my fields vertically if I want to vertically align those fields I just click on that button and it just shimmies them into place um, so that they're looking nice and aligned so the other options that you have is to pop their initials on each page of the document. Um, you can also have them um, enter in a text field. So if there's a form, say, that you need them to fill out, then the text field option is available as well. At your end, I should have mentioned that you do have, as well as those, um, the ability to pop your signature and your initials, text field and date field. You also have the ability to add a tick box as well as a note. So the note is something that will appear on the document. So if you hover over it, click edit, you'll be able to um, add the add your comment here. I'm just going to make a little note. So what I mean by this, this is here's a note that will not appear on the final doc. This is going to go through to the client. They're going to see this note, but once the, um, once the document has been completely signed, then the note disappears. So this is sort of the electronic or the digital version of a post-it. So that um, it will, it will show, show you what that looks like at the other end and um, see what the client says. Um, for at their end. So once you're happy with the placement of all of your fields, click on the save and send button. Again, you can customize the message. And the default expiration for your documents for signing is going to be seven days from today's date. If it comes close to that document expiring, you can always extend it for another seven days from, um, from that, that current date. You can do that in the management section, um, which I'll show you uh, at the end. And if you wanted to enable the SMS verification, which just sends your client a code uh, and they need to enter that in before the document gets signed, then you can just switch that on to that option on to yes. So we'll click save on that and then that's going to process the document for signing. It's going to email your client and also because my client has, or well, the one that I've invited here, has access to Connect, if they jump into their tasks again, well, you can see that they've got a signature request. So they could actually action it from here or within their inbox which will um, email them out with a, with a message saying that they have a document that needs to be signed. So they'll see a signature has been requested email. So one thing to note is that you can custom brand the emails that go out with document signing. So you can see here that it includes the message as well as the document name. They can click on the review document to be taken to document signing. I'm going to do it from the connect end. So here you can see they've got the review and sign option. That's going to take them to your custom branded document signing interface and it's got the message as well as the expiration date. They just click continue and here you can see the scroll to next button which they can click and we can pop their signature here, um, her name here, the date there, and you can see also that's what the note's going to look like at their end. So um, you can add messages to the document if you need to give them a little bit more information. Now the other thing that um, I was going to show you is the fact that you can customize your signature. So at the client's end, the way that they customize their signature is just in the top right, uh, top left corner here. So if they click on the customize my signature option, then what they can do is they can change that default uh, system generated script font into their own custom signature. And they can do that in a couple of ways. So we have here the um, the, if you've got a touch screen computer, um, then you'll be able to 
scribble on this little field here. Um, you can also do it with your mouse, but it's a little bit, um, it's just a little bit challenging. So what we've also done is you have the ability to use mobile setup. So what this does is it will, if you click that, it will present to you a QR code and uh, all your client needs to do is open up their camera app on their phone. So we have instructions there. You can see um, that you can open up the camera app and point at the QR code, which I am doing right now. And just click on the resulting link that appears on your phone. And it will take you to a similar screen that you saw previously. So I can customize my signature here. So I'm just going to scribble, um, let's see and save signature and then click complete on this screen and you can see now that that has changed to the customized signature so it really gives your clients the ability to put their own stamp put their own mark um, on the document rather than using a system generated font so once they're happy with the document, then they'll click sign document. They can also decline the document and they would need to provide a reason to you as to why they're declining it um, and you'll get the notification accordingly. I'm just gonna click on sign document, of course, because I'm happy with it. And that's now just going to be processed. Now, the thing with Sweet Files document signing is that it's going to ensure that the copy of that signed file as well as notifying you via email. So you'll receive a signed copy of the file via email. But the beauty of it is that it's going to save a copy of the signed file back into Sweet Files for you. So if we jump into Sweet Files here, so we created it at the top level there. So you can see back at the top level folder that I originally created my template from, I've got the Word document that I originally started with. I've got the PDF file that was, that's, this is just the Word doc turned into a PDF, uh, which I then marked up for signing. And now that the client has signed the file, I've, I do have an email in my inbox letting me know, but I also do have the option to just come back into that folder and I will be able to see the signed copy of the file stored back in Sweet Files. So this one has the digital signature stamp, um, the Sweet Files digital signature stamp. It also includes the date, the time and the user's IP address as well. So if we jump into the, let's just take a look at where you yourself can customize your own signature for documents. So if you click on your username in the top right corner and go into user profile settings, at the bottom of this list here, you'll find signatures. So again, that's going to give you the ability to edit that and it shows that exact same screen that I showed you earlier for your customer side but this is your your custom signature that's going to go on every document that you sign with Sweet Files uh, from this point forward. Uh, you can use a generated signature so that's just the system generated signature that comes by default or you can go through the mobile setup if you don't have a touch screen um, and you can't scribble on this particular screen you can always use the mobile setup scan the QR code with your camera and um, just follow the steps to set that up. So yeah, that's um, a really easy way to get your custom signature created. The other thing that you can do under the more drop down and selecting by selecting document signing, that is going to take you through uh, all of the files that you have sent out for document signing. Now, if you're an administrator of your suite file site, you have the ability to show all users or just your own files. Um, so for me, I just want to see what I have been sending out. And you can use the filters along the left hand side of the screen here to look at compute, uh, completed versus in progress. So I've got nothing in progress at the moment. If anyone has declined any files for you, um, if any have expired. So what you can do is for an expired document, you can click on the three dots here and you can extend the expiry. So that will resend the same, um, that initial email, as well as extend the expiry uh, for another seven days from today's date. 
if you yourself have cancelled a document, so you can only cancel a document while it's in progress. So again, these three dots will allow you to, to perform different actions on a document. Now, and so depending on what uh, status you are at with that document, it will depend on what you see from this list. And then as you have all of your completed in the list, you may want to just tidy that up. So you can uh, click on the three dots and archive your files so that's not going to archive them in your sweet file site it's just going to archive them from your list view at, at this end and then you'll be able to see them all under the archived option there now if you're an admin as well you'll have the ability to set up custom branding for your outgoing emails as well as the document signing interface. So by default, this will come through as Sweet Files branding. So you might want to jump in here before you send your first document for signing and as you're testing everything out in the house. Now, what you can customize is the banner and the buttons. So that's your primary color and your secondary color. So you can enter in either a hex code or click on this tile here and that will take you through um, the color picker or you can enter in the RGB values from here. And one thing we recommend just for your colors, it, they'll really pop if you use darker colors with a lighter logo, if you have that available. So you can see here, we recommend that you utilize, you upload for your logo, a PNG file that has a transparent background. And that way it will look really nice on both the website and the email, just because the emails themselves are white. So um, just, just try it out and um, really keen to hear your feedback on that as well. We've got a lot of people using that um, but if you do have any feedback on that then we're all ears and um, happy for you to you can click some uh, feedback through by clicking on your username in the top right corner and clicking the provide feedback and that just got, comes through to us uh, in our support inbox um, the other thing to note is just for your secondary color, uh, don't pick white. Um, that's just something that we will restrict in future. Um, but right now, just a heads up that if you do select white, then your clients will no, not see the continue button. So that is something that we're going to fix. But just as, as, um, as you're on the call today, thought I'd let you know, um, really, uh, really important for them to be able to see that button. So that's, um, that's just a hot tip that you get for attending today's session. The other thing that you can do is if you're wanting other users to be able to uh, access and customize your branding for you, then an admin can jump into the more drop down, select manage users and groups. And then for individual users, they will be able to select. Uh, so let's say this person here is not an admin, but you can switch on the ability to amend the custom branding by just jumping into their user settings and toggling that on to yes. Okay, I think that is that is it as far as the document signing and the connect um, connect functionality is concerned. If you do have any questions at all, then please uh, do add them to the Q and A section. Um, we'll take a bit of a breather, and I will be back in a minute to answer any of your questions.
Alrighty, okay, so we have a, a few questions here. So I'll make a start at going through those and answering as many as I can. Now, let's start at the top. So, um, someone has asked, I think I've already gone through this, but when you send an editable document, say an Excel or a Word file from a client's folder, will it show as being locked or checked out? So I mentioned that because we're built on Office 365, provided you're opening the document in from the web app. So that would be the Suite Files um, web app that I've been showing you through today. So not Suite Files Drive. Um, that means that you will be able to see who's in the document at the same time. Uh, Karen has asked, is there a way to limit the connect function for our employees? So no, there's not uh, at the moment, but yeah, keen to um, and grateful for your feedback on that. So I'm assuming by asking that you are wanting the ability to limit the ability for your your staff to um, to create connected folders. So yeah, that's something that I can certainly pass on to our development team. Um, right now, sort of with the initial rollout, we did it is quite open, um, but we are certainly looking at ways that, um, and based on on feedback, how people are wanting to sort of lock things down, whether that's it your end from from your user's perspective or if it's from the client's end so for example maybe you want to share word documents with your client but maybe you don't want them to edit them um, so yes yeah, certainly things that we can do there around around sort of blocking functionality out um, but for the initial um, connect launch we've made it very very open and collaborative um, so hope that helps answer your question and i'll definitely pass that on to the development team um, Mike's asked, are uh, the client edits logged? So for example, if you, I guess, if you're editing a Word document, then those edits are logged as part of Microsoft Office 365's version history. So you can jump into a Word document or an Excel file, um, go into the options, I believe, and, and access the version history from there. So um, that's that's more of a Microsoft function than, than necessarily a suite files function. But as you can see, if you access the more drop down um, and access your connected folders. If we jump in here, this is the recent activity would be the best place to keep track of what is happening um, with your connected files. Uh, yes, okay, so we've got a few people asking around the the email notifications um, and when people can, when people at the connect end complete tasks, then do we get notified as such? So let's just cover that off because I didn't do that very well. Now if we jump back in to Mitzi's folder and let's just refresh that. So in this case, she's uploaded both of these things. So I've seen that she's done that um, at the connect end, but once she marks that as done, so we will do that for both of these files. If I now jump back into my suite files with the, uh, with the third tier plan, so with the super suite plan that enables you to have uh, document signing and suite files connect, you'll note that the tasks area has been given a little bit of a makeover. Um, so what you'll find under your sent tasks is all of that communication back and forth. So sort of treat this like your external, um, your external tasks versus under my tasks, it's more around the things that have been shared with you by your colleagues. Um, sent tasks is more around the connect side of things. So here, if I was to jump into this, um, this particular, message, that's that file request and where she's uploaded both her September and October bank statement. I can preview that file. Um, I can go to the folder where the file is stored. In this case, it's under the 2019 folder. I can see that she's marked that as done as well. Now, in order for me to have that officially closed off, then you really get the final say as to whether or not the task <coughs> has been closed. Um, if, if you count that as being closed, you click close task and then that will um, clear it from your to-dos. Again, with this cake message, she's come back and said that wasn't me, so you can uh, close that task as well. So that's just the way that you keep track of all of your um, tasks. In at the suite files end. And then in terms of the notifications right now, what we have is 
uh, if we jump into my inbox here, you'll see just that Outlook add-in. So you can see when files have been uploaded, um, but it will definitely make improvements to this so that you can see, um, sounds like people are definitely wanting more email notifications and in-app notifications uh, when things have been actioned and uploaded and edited and, and marked as done. So um, definitely things that we can do there to improve that. Um, but yeah, you will receive a no email notifications like this when you have, the, say, the bank statement was uploaded for September as well as the bank statement for October. So that was through the tasks, um, tasks interface. Okay, so I think that there were a few questions on the tasks side of things, which I hope I have answered. Um, at the moment, we are integrating Now Infinity with DocuSign. Can we merge Now Infinity with Sweet Files? So we are working on a number of integrations with other um, with other app partners. So I can definitely make note of, of that request um, and and pop that through to our the, the team that's looking after all of our integrations. So Gary, I'll, I'll pop you pop you down there. It's not something that we have at the moment, um, but if you if you are, I guess, if, you, if you're producing documents from another system, then you can, right now, you would have to save that file um, into Sweet Files. So if it's a PDF file, um, you can basically you download it from the other system, bring it into Sweet Files by dragging and dropping it, uh, most likely. And then if it's a PDF file, then you'll have the document signing um, options, but there's no sort of two-way integration um, for that at this stage with other, with other systems. Um, oh, so someone's asked about the authorization system that we use. I think maybe that's... Um, is that asking just around the SMS verification? Um, that I don't have the answer to, but I can definitely find out for you and uh, and let you know. So I don't have your details though because you've posted that as anonymous. So sorry, I can't answer that on the spot. Um, do you have to use two-factor also again for your SMS verification? Um, that is up to you as to whether or not you enable it. It's on a case by case basis. So um, completely up to you for the document signing. Mike has asked, can you join multiple PDFs together for signing? So that's not something that we do right now, but it's definitely something that is on our radar for next year. So definitely watch this space, Mike. And um, yeah, really keen to hear hear people's feedback on that. So I might actually reach out separately and, and see what you actually want there because then that way we can make sure that what we design and build is actually fit for purpose. So I, I might be in touch. Um, someone has asked if the signature feature is compliant and accepted as a legal document. Um, so yeah, we have gone through a process of getting, we have our own digital citing certificate so that's authorized and that's recognized by adobe by microsoft um, so it's the equivalent of say i guess getting something digitally signed um, through adobe sign so we do have terms and conditions that you'll need to complete before you start using document signing so that's really important to note um, but i guess every Every sort of other, every place has different requirements. So it's really a case if you're wanting to utilize Sweet Files document signing, then it's a case of making sure that you have checked that the, the, the types of documents that you're using to sign it are accepted. So digital signatures are accepted. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll send out more information on that um, definitely so that you have, have more info. Um, can you attach supporting documents when sending for signing? No, unfortunately, you don't have that ability, but um, I can definitely pass that on to the development team for them to add to the suggestions list. That's a really good one. Can all files be locked so the client cannot delete or change them in their portals? So um, as mentioned before, we it is quite an open um, open scenario right now, but yeah, we are looking at ways that, um, that we can apply permissions um, that I don't have a date on when that might 
come into play. So right now the functionality is that it is it is open and you can't um, lock things down so that they can't delete or change the files in their portal. So I guess the, the best option is to share only PDF files um, because they can't edit them from within the suite files connect area um, but if it was a word document or an excel file if they had office 365 then yep they would be able to edit the files um does it cost extra to send sms verification no andrea it doesn't it just is included as part of your super suite subscription um how so another question around sort of the, the document signing and the pricing. So how many requests can we send annually or monthly? Um, I guess a fair use policy applies, but we don't have we don't have any limits in place. So as part of your subscription, um, which I'll mention it now for everyone who um, is interested in, in learning more about the pricing side of things, we have our three plans. So I'll just jump onto our pricing page here. It's easier. So if you just go to suitefiles.com forward slash pricing, then you'll see all of our current plans. So one thing to note is that many of you who are on existing plans, you, um, you'll be, you can keep those prices for the foreseeable future. Um, but for those that are interested in including document signing and connected portals on their plan for suite files then you'd be looking at the super suite option so that's $35 per user per month um, that's $35 New Zealand Aussie dollars or US dollars so that same price applies um, across the board there if you are interested in other pricing um, we do have GBP but I'm pretty sure everyone in the UK is asleep right now so no one will be on this call from there but that um, will also give you a few extra features such as unlimited and custom training so you can come along to our weekly training sessions which we have we have four a week um, when you come on board but if you need any uh, refresher training or you have a particular scenario that you want to go through with our team then you will be able to set up um, free and custom training with our customer success team and we also have unlimited backups versus the 500 gigabytes that you get on the middle tier plan and we also have thrown in a financial year bulk folder generation so each financial year um, you can contact us and we will add another financial year folder within all of your clients folders for you for free then of course you've got the connected folders and the client task management functions as well as document signing all, all rolled into that one package. So um, that's, the, that's the plan that you would need to be on in order to access that. No extra cost for SMS verification for document signing. No, um, you know, there's no limit to how many documents that you can send or how many portals you can create. Um, and it is a per user per month charge so we don't split it out into um you know certain certain users having one plan versus certain using another every if you want document signing or connect then everyone on your team would be on that um super sweet plan so just in case you are wanting to upgrade your plan um you can do that from within suite files so for those of you who are admins of your suite file site if you just click on your username in the top right corner uh, select manage subscription that is going to take you into to our management portal. So we've just recently added that option um, just to give you a, an easier way to access the management portal. So we'll wait for that to load and I will keep on answering your questions. Okay, so Laurie has asked, does the client need an Office 365 to utilize connect file requests and signing? Nope, they don't. They will still have the ability to view um, view everything and connect as you've seen me do today. The only thing that they won't have access to is the ability to open up a Word document or an Excel file that you've shared with them via connect and edit it. 
so that's that's the only thing that they won't be able to do otherwise yep that doesn't rely on them them having office 365 um, they could simply download the word document you've shared with them edit it and re-upload their version of the file um, for you back into connect so definitely definitely possible for them to use it without office 365 Uh, is there a way to create a document signing package that would include more than one file? Oh, yep. So that was relating to those sort of um, stitching together different documents. So, yeah, we don't do that right now, but it's definitely on our radar, as I mentioned earlier. Um, Alice, yep, I can email you the prices. That's no problem. Mitchell has said that he's just double checking how the clients access the client accesses the suite files folder at their end. So they have to click on a link. Yeah, that's exactly right. So I'll just jump back into the client's inbox. So here we were in my client's email. So the very first, um, the very first time that you, maybe it's this one here, yep. This is what they're going to receive. So it will be an email that looks similar to this. They will click the view um the view such and such folder button that's going to take them into this screen here so it will point them to this here they would be able to <clears throat> log in with their zero credentials their google credentials um, just noting that the email address that they log in with needs to match the one that you shared you know that you you invited them with um, otherwise they can enter in their email address again this email address needs to match the one that you invited them with and then they'll be able to um, set up a password uh, and we'll just take a couple of couple more details from them and then they'll be able to um, set up a username and password to use with connect so yep they get invited the very first time and then each subsequent time you you request a file from them or share another folder with them or send them a file to approve I'll send them a document to sign that they Will receive email notifications so yeah they'll, they'll receive those every step of the way um other sent tasks other sent tasks communications and chats stored via email um not 100% sure I understand that one. So you get those emails. So that's what the, the client will receive. Uh, the chats are stored within the tasks area within suite files, um, within your own suite files. So that's within here under tasks. You'll see um, all of the chats that have happened. Um, so hopefully that helps answer your emails. Um, someone else has asked, are emails from Outlook stored into suite files? So, yep, so the emails that we've been sending have been via suite files, but if you are sending an email via, uh, via Outlook, via the desktop version of Outlook, then yep, you can, you get the option to save your emails um, on send. So that is definitely a, a feature that is available. Um, just for those of you that are curious about this thing that's sticking out the side of my Outlook, this is our new Outlook add-in. So this is going to be coming out um, probably early next month. Um, we're just going through some final testing and we've got it out for early release for certain customers. So if you are an existing customer and you're keen to get your hands on the shiny new Outlook add-in, then please contact, uh, you can contact me. Uh, my email address is Roshni, which is just R-O-S-H-N-I at sweetfiles.com and I will put you on the list because we'd love to hear your feedback. Um, so that's, that's just something that's coming out soon for everybody. Um, so someone's just mentioned that in-app notifications would be great, then better than email if they get too many emails as it is. I hear you. So that is, um, that's something that we're looking at as well is just the ability to allow you to customize how you receive your notifications through Connect. And Debbie has asked if we're able to change the email address to better reflect the business. So rather than coming from no reply at the full suite, can it come from you know their own business email address it's not something we have set up at the moment and i don't have an answer for you on that today it has come up before and i have um, passed it on to the development team so as we review all of the feedback for connect then we'll definitely um, let everyone know the changes that we make um, but debbie i'll put put your name down as is having requested that so we can just keep keep in touch with you on that one because i understand that i understand that's um 
that just means that you know your clients won't um, will be more likely to to read the email and uh, collaborate with you and connect so definitely hear you on that one um, Alice asked can she have one user on super suite and the others on standard or, or semi suite or simply unfortunately not so it is and um, once you unlock the benefits of the super suite package that's going to go through ripple through the entire business and um, that's going to mean that everyone in your team will need to be on that plan even if you're not um, even if they themselves aren't actually going to be using those those functions so we can't split subscriptions unfortunately and do you Mitchell said do you recommend that they save the initial login via the browser's favorites so that they can easily reaccess yep they can they can definitely do that we don't um, we don't necessarily mention that um, but we do we do have um, that's definitely definitely a really good idea for them to be able to quickly access connect um, keeping in mind that every time you do share share something with them or request something from them they will receive an email notification with a link that goes straight to connect so for my client's case because she's using gmail it will automatically log her in and remember her credentials so it's quite handy so I think that is it in terms of the questions. Um, so some great feedback and questions there. I might have missed a few under the chat, um, but they look like they're quite similar. Yep, um, Brad's just asked if we're gonna send a recording. Absolutely, so we'll um, package this all up and pop that on our, up on our YouTube channel and email that out, email the link out to everybody. Uh, Nico has asked the, well, they've noticed that the DocuSign, document signing document will be expired in seven days. Do we have an option on this or after the seven days if the client has not signed, can we, re, do we have to redo it again? I, that's a very good point. So what, um, what we, it does just default to seven days at the moment. We do have plans to allow you to customize or you know, pick the date of expiry from a drop down. But in a scenario where a file has expired, so you can jump into the more drop down and then document signing under the expired list. So this is just a filter for any document that is expired. You can click on the three dots here. You can extend the expiry, which does a couple of things. So in this case, it will, um, it's going to send out a, another email to your client, letting them know that there's a document available for them to sign um, and that we've extended the expiry on it. And they'll also have another seven days from today's date to review it. So we are, um, we were automatically emailing people on days three, five, and six, but there were a few issues with that one. So we're gonna, we've rolled that back. Um, but what you will find in future is that we will automatically email um, just so that you don't have to chase them. But um, once it does expire, then yet yeah, you will have to uh, come in here and extend the expiry date. So um, that's hopefully that helps answer your question and yeah in future as you've as you've mentioned there um, hopefully we'll be able to set something up so that you can actually customize um, the reminder settings so yeah all those things are on our radar and um, really appreciate your feedback there okay well thank you so much everyone um, who has stuck in till the very stuck by till the very end of the training session really appreciate it if you do have any last minute questions then feel free to add them to the q a um and i've got a little bit um a little bit over time um so yeah really appreciate you sticking around and if you do have any other um, questions the easiest way after the session of course is to reach out to us at support at sweetfiles.com um, otherwise, you're most welcome. You'll have my email address on um, the, I think, on the invitation as well. So feel free to get in touch with me directly if need be. Happy to hear from you. So thanks, everyone, and um, hope to see you along at another webinar soon. Enjoy the rest of your day.
Okay, so it doesn't look like we have any further questions. So what I'll do is I'll close up the webinar now. But as I mentioned, if you do have any questions at all, uh, then please feel free to reach out to us at support at sweetfiles.com. So that email address is up on the screen for you now. Um, if you do have any, uh, if you need any further help, then you can always jump onto our help center, which is help.sweetfiles.com. Lots of information on connect and document signing up there and if you want to come along to our weekly webinars so as mentioned we hold um, we hold these weekly uh, there are four sessions so it covers the basics of suite files a special session for admins we've got an advanced training session that goes through file templates scanning and sharing and then we wrap up the training week with a look at the Zero Practice Manager integration. So um, that's the URL there if you want to jump on and register for those webinars. Look forward to seeing you there. And um, I take it everyone here is subscribed to our newsletter, which is why you are here today. Um, and we just keep you updated with all of our product updates via our monthly newsletter. So uh, look forward to seeing you along again in future and uh, look forward to hearing any feedback that you have on Connect and Document Signing as you jump in and start using it. So thanks everyone again and uh, see you again soon.